Hey guys, welcome to another week of Church Online. Hope you guys are going to be really excited about it. Uh, enjoy it. Peace. Malam ini nama saya Mikey Smith Ekes. Bapa ibu bapa saya pun nak kisah baik dengan bapa saya nak bayi saya. Fad di, itu lah ayah saya. Kau nak info orang tak kira bapa anda buat tes. Ekes bayi dengan bapa saya kau jadi orang yang kreatif. Ina saya dia kat tipe. Itu saya tak. Ina saya kau beri makan bapa saya. All the food that we're distributing today is food that has been uh, paid by the teachers of the school. They contributed 2,000 rand, and so we were able to give every learner packages this morning that is also in need of food. So we are very fortunate to, to, to assist in this regard. Hello, I am a member of the Bonden Park in the school and I am also responsible for the food scheme and the NSNP program of the school. We made our packs and our food for the people who were out there. It was about 120 people. After we had a lot of food to make, because we had a lot of food for all of us. Het die personeel achterna bij je slecht gevoel, die schoolhof het gevoel slecht omdat mensen moest omdraai. Toe krijg je donatie van de duizend rand. En hij begint over mij de geld. Ik ga een kopje goed zo lang met mij eigen geld. Die kost wat ik gekoop het was niet voor vijftig mensen genoeg. En ik besluit ook ik ga naar de personeelgroep vragen of elke personeel het die alsjeblieft een blikje vis wil kopen. Want dan heb ik vijftig, tien mensen vijftig blikjes vis om bij die vijftig pakjes te sit wat ek wil opmaak. Want toe ek wees sien, toe sê die een, ek gaan sommer twaalf blikjes vis gee. Die ander een sê, ek gaan twaalf blikjes vis gee. Die een sê, ek gaan tweehonderd rand gee. En aan die einde van die dag, het ons gesit, voor die aand om is, toe sit ons met achtduisend rand plus. Gister het die principaal weer na my toegekom. Toe gaan koop ek en hy die ander koos by. En dit is wat ons nou hier vandag uitgedeel het. I'm Sabrina Horn en I'm a youth worker at Park Dean High School. And I'm part of Love George organization. And we're really excited in what the teachers are doing for the kids. But we want to make it sustainable. And so we've decided to partner with them and help them in what they are already doing. If you want to partner with us to help these schools, organizations and churches within the communities around George, you can donate money or you can donate food items at the designated locations. Bye, mensen and dear pain, dear ouders, I can tell you again. I will not say that ons mensen. Ons kinders moet baie dankbaar wees vir hierdie so ek sien dit baie dankie vir ons onderwijsers en lekker dag verder. You are the Lord, there is no other You created darkness and formed the light You are the Lord, there is no other The heavens were made as your voice sang out 
You are the Lord, there is no other. You called the mountains, rolled out the ocean. You are the Lord, there is no other. Formed us in your image for your good pleasure. King of heaven, Lord of lords, the first and the last, creator of it all. There's no other rock, most I, Jesus. You are deserving of endless devotion. Oh, Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, seated on the throne. I exalt forever glorify the whole earth is filled with your glory, your glory, the whole earth is filled with your glory, your glory. You are the Lord, there is no other. All the starry host you have commanded. You are the Lord, there is no other. Bringer of life, creator of order. King of heaven, Lord of lords. Desire of the nations, maker of it all. praise you surely the rocks will you are deserving of endless devotion holy 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 is the Lord almighty seated on the throne I exalt
we don't praise you, surely the rocks will. You are deserving of endless devotion. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, seated on the throne. I am exalted, forever glorified. The whole earth is filled with your glory, your glory. The whole earth is filled with your glory, your glory. The whole earth is filled with your glory, your glory. Hey guys, so lockdown continues. I hope you guys are having fun and uh, keeping yourselves entertained. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about how to, how to detox your mind. And um, uh, one, of, one of the cool things I've been thinking about with regards to this lockdown is the fact that the government banned all sale of alcohols. So some of us are being forced to detox. Um, shout out to the wine drinkers. Uh, but on a serious note, it's, it's amazing to see what God is doing through this uh, lockdown. There are literally people who are addicted to alcohol that do not have access to alcohol. There are people that are addicted to drugs that do not have access to drugs. And it's kind of like we're all being forced on rehab in yeah. one form or another. And some of us are having to do a rehab of the mind, and I'm going to continue with the theme that I left off last time. So last time we spoke a little bit about um, keeping our thoughts on what is on uh, what is good and noble and true and admirable, um, and trusting that the God of peace would come upon us um, from Philippians 4. And today I'm going to read from 1 John 4, um, because I think one of the things that really gets us... Um, clouded in our minds when we start to think about responsibility and fault and certainly when things start going bad i don't know uh, if you're like me when things start going bad you try to start pointing fingers and who did what wrong and where did it go wrong and what should have been done better and who didn't do their job and what my wife did do or didn't do and what my kids did do and didn't do and what my boss did do and didn't do and um, and it's a normal human reaction, and uh, if you're like me, you start getting very angry over very hypothetical situations that haven't even existed, and uh, your mind just starts going into a cloud. And um, one of the best ways to remedy this, and if you're going through this yourself, maybe you're really anxious about what's going on with the lockdown, and one of the best ways to do it is to have a conversation about responsibility and um, because you always be, want to be the person that responds in a crisis and does not react in a crisis and by that I mean you're prepared to be useful and helpful in any eventuality and uh, now of all times we're in a crisis and are you going to be the person that adds to the chaos and the anxiety are you going to be the person that alleviates people's stress and anxiety. You're going to be the person that responds in love or reacts out of fear. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. So like I said, we've got to, we have got to have a talk about fault and responsibility. And we've got to separate those two things because they're not often the same thing, you know. So often somebody would come and say, um, this went wrong, what happened? And the first response would be, well, it's not my fault. Or, you know, it wasn't me, it was that guy. It wasn't me, it was, you know, circumstances. Um, God did it. Sometimes people even say that. Um, and what I'm hearing is, um, I don't want to take responsibility for it. It's not my fault. 
And um, that's a bit of a problem because fault and responsibility are two different things. Fault is who did it and responsibility is who will make amends for it. And the best example that we have for this is Jesus Christ himself. Um, he came to earth and made himself man and died for our sins. And our sins were not his fault, but he did take full responsibility for it. And in, and in doing so, he has full authority, as Philippians 2 says. He was obedient, even obedient until death. And that's the kind of image and person that we want to that we want to um, uh, look towards and partner with. We want to be like Jesus. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. That's why you, hopefully you're listening to me. You want to be more like Jesus. So let's go to 1 John 4. I'm going to read from verse 7 and you can follow with me. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So that's, that's Jesus coming into the world. Um, he did not sin. The sin was not his fault. God sent him. This, this is from verse 10. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And isn't this a beautiful picture of, this isn't about blame shifting. This is about, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the one to love in this situation. Why? Well, because Jesus first loved me. Because I understand that without Jesus, I'm a sinner. Uh, without worth and with Jesus, I have everything that I need that pertains to life and life in abundance. Um, I have righteousness through his blood. I can boldly go into the throne room. And so there isn't a need to react out of fear in any given circumstance because everything has already been atoned for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the thing that we want to meditate on. So why do we first want to take responsibility? Well, because Christ took responsibility. We want to be like Christ. What did Christ do? Well, he took responsibility. And it's not about fault. Once again, we've got to separate fault from responsibility. It's not about whose fault it is. When there's a crisis, when there's tension in the house, when you're trying to make right with your wife, it's not about whose fault is it. The leader initiates the leader takes responsibility and so the question that i want to throw at you to challenge you is how will you take responsibility for what is going on in your household um hopefully hopefully um you, you know, there's there's not too much tension in the household hopefully there's no tension in the household and if there is how will you take responsibility for it and i'm talking not just to husbands or i'm talking to wives i'm talking to kids I'm talking to teenagers, I'm talking to grandparents. It's the first thing that we want to do is point fingers, yeah, but you did this. And I'm throwing it around and saying, but you're the leader. You want to be the leader. You want the authority. So how will you take responsibility? That is the question you've got to ask. In any given situation, not just what we're in now, but how will I take responsibility? for it? What was the part that I played that contributed to the tension? What was the part that I played that will contribute to the resolution of conflict. Then that should extend not just into my household, but beyond my household. Um, and um, we've got to give up the idea of trying to be right. So I'm going to turn once again to Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. So this is the giving up the part of I want to be right. I want the last Oreo, um, I want this, I want that, I want to watch what's on TV. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? What can anyone give in exchange for the soul? 
And I think this is really where it plays out. And it starts in the family setting. Because family knows how to push buttons. And I'm throwing out this challenge for you to ask yourself, how can I take responsibility? So I want to leave you with this. Just as Christ had all authority, he had all authority because he took all responsibility. It wasn't his fault that we sinned, but he took responsibility, therefore he gained full authority. So if you want authority in any given situation, you've got to ask yourself, how can I take responsibility? You've got to lay down maybe even the argument um, and gain the authority in the situation and therefore be a discipler of Jesus. Amen. You're pretty uh, good. Like, this is pretty comfortable. Uh, <laughs> Rest in peace, Omar. <laughs>